Hello everyone and welcome back to Internet Report's Pulse Update, the bi-weekly podcast where we discuss what's up, what's down, what's working and not working and generally keep our finger on the pulse of how the internet is holding up week over week. This week we're going to be chatting about how overlapping maintenance schedules resulted in an outage at Slack and other disruptions at Spotify and Wells Fargo, along with the West Africa Cable Cut. And joining me to discuss all this this week is Kamal Shankar, my good friend, colleague, and principal internet analyst here at Thousand Eyes. Kamal, welcome back to the Pulse Update podcast. It's been a while, mate. Uh, th- thanks, Mike. It's, it's good to be back on the podcast and looking forward to cover this one. Great stuff, mate. So let's start with the download, my TLDR summary of what to know about the internet this week in two minutes or less. So one thing I've been thinking about recently is how important it is to make sure all teams have visibility into work other teams are doing, especially when working on distributed web-based applications or service where everything is linked and depend on each part functioning correctly. It's all too easy for a change for one team to make to unexpectedly impact some, some another part another team is working on, or the combined impact of both together their changes may accidentally break something. So one way to avoid this is obviously to cut back on the silos as much as possible. But however, it's difficult to eliminate siloed operations or dis- decision making completely. But the negative impact of silos can be reduced if each team has a view of the end-to-end service that is tailored to the spe- specific area or domain, so it's presented them in a context they understand and they can actually work with. So one recent incident that illustrates how combined the impact of two separate actions can have unintended consequences is the August 2nd Slack disruption, which appeared to be caused by overlapping maintenance schedules. We'll discuss more about what happened during the incident later in the episode, but in short, the Slack disruption lasted from just after 4pm UTC to 6pm UTC and initially prevented users from uploading files or sharing screenshots, with images appearing blurred or greyed out. And for a subset of users, this then progressed into errors or slowness with other functions of the service. Some users encountered slow page load times and general uh, instability, with some appearing even to be unable to log on to the system. In other outage news, on August the 5th, Spotify experienced an issue with a back-end API. Uh, This has meant that when users searched for the content, it actually returned no results. And any non-downloaded playlist, that's playlist information that hadn't been downloaded, uh, uh, would result in a blank screen. This application behavior meant that many of the users thought the issue lay on their own client and as a result attempted to resolve the issue themselves by doing things like restarting the app, rebooting the device, and in some cases even deleting and reinstalling the apps, essentially applying the uh, have you tried turning it off and again fix to sort of get around this problem. So again, we're going to discuss this a bit more of the how, why, and what later in this episode. The West Africa cable system, uh, WACS, and the South Atlantic 3, so SAT3, Um, cables have suffered new breakages in early August. Uh, The same cables have experienced cuts in the past due to weather events, but thankfully newer cable capacity in the region has meant that traffic could be easily uh, or mostly routed around these cuts. So we frequently now see this kind of route diversity worldwide with fewer single routes in and out of country, so these single dependencies, or between countries or continents. And this has significantly aided the internet's resilience and the ability to deal with the uh, ambient or anomalous um, uh, operating conditions. And finally in today's TLDR, on August 5th, for the second time this year, Wells Fargo experienced an issue with its banking apps where deposits did not show up in the customer's accounts. The nature of this outage hasn't been fully explained, uh, but on the surface there's similarities to the recent issues at Australia's Commonwealth Bank, where users faced excessive wait times when trying to call information from the back-end system sitting behind the banking app UI. So again, this is someone where we're looking at the front end we can actually get to, but this connectivity into the back-end systems is not there. As always, we've included the chapter links in the description box below, so you can skip ahead to sections that are most interesting to you at any time. And if you haven't subscribed yet, we'd love if you take a minute to hit subscribe button now. It really helps us out, and also make sure that you're the first to know when new episodes drop. Please feel free to email us at internetreport at thousandice.com. We always welcome your feedback and questions. And now, let's take a look at the overall outage trends we've been seeing. So global outages exhibited a slight upward trend over this two-week period, initially rising from 156 to 171, which is a 10% increase when compared to July 24 to 30th. So this was followed by a rare week where the total outage observed remained constant. 
Yes, that's definitely not something that we see too often. It's worth noting that this pattern was not uh, reflected on the U.S. outages. Uh, U.S. centric outages initially rose from 60 to 63, which is a 5% increase when compared to July 24 to 30th. And then they dropped to uh, from 63 to 59, uh, 59 the next week, which is a 6% uh, decrease. Yeah, we did see a difference there. And when we look at the percentage of all observed outages made up by the US centric outages, the US centric outages accounted for 36% of all observed outages from July 31 to August 13th, which is somewhat smaller than the percentage we observed during the uh, prior two weeks. Yeah, that's the time, that's the first time we are seeing the percentages this low since April, and I has it, it probably has to do something with the uh, summer in in the northern hemisphere. Um, you know, there's no there's no possible other reason, I guess. Like people are taking PTOs. You know, uh, there's an, uh, there's not enough um, workforce in the offices to uh, make all of these changes, and obviously, what we are seeing is the tail end of that, which is uh, which is a smaller number of outages overall. Yeah, that's right. And then definitely worth watching to see how things progress in the coming weeks. And as this two-week period um, we're currently examining includes the end of July, let's reflect on those outage trends across the entire month. So we look at then the global outages dropped from 7.10 to 6.91 uh, in July, which is a 3% decrease compared to June. Uh, and this pattern again was reflected in the US with the outages dropping from 3.10 to 3.08 to 1% 1 decrease. And as you said, Kamal, this is, is, is probably reflecting this northern, hum northern hemisphere summer we're actually in at the moment. I agree. Like uh, this Dunbar trend from June to July reflects the partners we, we observed the previous years as well. Yeah, absolutely. And I'll definitely be interested to see how the numbers are going to fluctuate as the summer draws to a close. And hopefully I've reached summer. So that'll be good. <laughs> so, now let's so, so now let's discuss some of the outages from the last few weeks as we go under the hood. On August the 2nd, from 4.01 p.m. UTC to 6 p.m. UTC, Slack experienced an issue that initially prevented users from uploading files or sharing screenshots with images, uh, appearing blurred or grayed out uh, for a subset of users. This then progressed into errors or slowness with other functions of service. Some users encountered slow pages, slow load times, uh, and general instability, with some even appearing as the, as the uh, outage went on to be able to log on. Um, so, what we're going to do is we're just going to take a look at that, so what it looked like in, in, inside Thousand Eyes. And so for all of those listening in audio only, um, what we're looking at here is we're going to show is a screen of the outage as seen from Thousand Eyes platform. And I'll be sure to talk you through it so you don't miss out. And for those who aren't familiar, Thousand Eyes is a platform that gives you a great view of the entire digital supply chain. We have Thousand Eyes agents across the internet providing us a multiple vantage points to see where disruptions are happening at both the network and application server levels. Um, so I want to demonstrate how visibility here can be especially useful in helping operation teams quickly identify and fix issues that come up. So with that, let's actually take a look and see what it looks like. So what I want to start off with, I just want to look at this view from Internet Insights. So Internet Insights is actually providing us that collective intelligence. So we're taking the measurements from the cloud agents, the enterprise agents, which allows us to have that collective view of what's happening. And there's a couple of things here that, that, that really interested me, uh, Kamal, when I actually looked at it. So th the first one here is we actually see the outage start on the hour. Um, so we actually see it start at that, um, or the disruption, I should say, start at that 4 p.m. UTC time across there. And then the second point to that is this, this beautiful castellation pattern that comes up. I'm a simple man. I love my patterns. But here we're actually sort of seeing that these um, uh, castellations. So to start with there, if I'm saying it starts on the hour, one of my assumptions there is is. We're thinking normally, um, you know, outages is uh, outages happen all the time. But you know, really, for it to actually sort of start on the hour, maybe it's been triggered by some sort of automation, some sort of schedule thing. So that, that, that's my first thing. And then I'll go into this next bit, which is this castellation. This pattern, to me, if I look like there, looks like it's it's almost intermittent. I.e., disruptions intermittent. Is that is that a fair thing to say, Kamal? Or? So uh, the first one is actually uh, spot on. I would say that the fact that it starts at the top of the R indicates that it might be either automation, some automation task to your point, or uh, potentially uh, some maintenance uh, being worked on. Um, but when it comes to the second point, actually, what I, I would say that this was the outage, and uh, you know, even more so, 
What really uh, looks like it happened uh, in this particular case is the fact that we see this like, you know, spiky uh, kind of trend as part of which there's a spike, then it kind of recovers, then it spikes, then it recovers. It looks like they were potentially rolling something out and then like, you know, uh, resiliency of the application would take over or essentially not just resiliency of the application, maybe their operational procedures would kick in, automation would kind of like try to smooth things out. However, when they were roll it to some potentially other cluster we would see the spike then oh, like it smoothens out so this kind of spiky uh, nature of these things indicates that you know they were gradually rolling potentially something out however uh, you know uh, the fact is that you know this solid uh, red light or um, uh, red color indicates that the outage uh, was happening while this was happening and you know there's no beating around the bush this is this is what we are seeing they were affected and it's quite obvious here that's a good point you said about the, the solid red line and the outage time and yeah absolutely i think and as we get into it you know we we, we 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 know what happened we can see this come there and i think you're right about the rolling out from there because i you know sort of the intermittent come from there but it's like what's we coping with but it's, it's again it's an indication that something's happening i think which, which is what you're saying there and and the other one you're saying about the the, the, the red the outages there you know we, we we talked at the top and, and the official announcement from slack talks about that 4 p.m. to uh, 6 p.m. UTC. And when we're actually looking here, we've seen the major part of that disruption lasting an hour. So go, going on to there. So what we're saying here is, is that is, is in terms of disruption, it's sort of started to sort of clear around the, um, from, from our perspective and what we're seeing from a user impact, it starts to clear around that 1710. Um, but the, the effects sort of can go on a little bit longer, but this is a time for them to see that. So to your point about where the automation kicks in, they're starting to roll things back or they're starting to look what's happening. You know, we get this sun drop off at the end here where maybe the, the sort of the, the, the um, uh, well, we know what happened. They actually sort of stopped something happening at this point, And we then started to, uh, to see things for service recover. So they're able then to fix it. It was this combination of two things colliding. So in isolation, it was actually good, but the fact that these happening, but let, let, let's, let's get into that. The, the final point before I move off the Internet Insights where I'm actually looking, I've actually gone down, I'm now looking at the Sankey view, which is showing me the um, the agents, the, the points running into the, uh, from an application perspective, then running into the destination, so the Slack server. One of the things we were doing and what you looked at when we do an analysis of, of this outage is if I actually sort of flip that into, what am I going to do is to, to show, show the server network to see where this application is hosted. We can see it's hosted in Amazon. But then if we actually looked at um, what else was happening uh, within Amazon at time, we could see that this was isolated specifically to the Slack um, application itself uh, hosted on the Amazon. So it wasn't the sector we could deduce from that. Or again, here's a question to you, Kamal. Is it safe to, to deduce from that then that this is a problem with the application or the, 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 um, the degradation is happening within the application level as opposed to the underlying infrastructure, the hosting environment? Yes, it, it, it's pretty indicative in this particular case. Yes, they are hosted on Amazon. And what we are looking at are two different um, Amazon autonomous system numbers, 6509, which is their backbone, and the other one is uh, uh, their data center uh, autonomous system number. Obviously, the application itself is hosted here, but given the fact that there is no indications uh, about different outages happening within the Amazon, which we also closely monitor as well, uh, indicates that this is most likely application outage itself. So that's, that's great, Kamal. Yeah, now we've seen that at that high level, that macro view. So let's actually come down and see what was happening at individual tests. So what I've done now is I've actually gone into one of the tests that was impacted there. So I'm actually looking at here, which is a page load test. And why it's a page load test is important, uh, as, as, as I show you, because what I'm looking at to start with here is, again, we see the, 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 the turn off, the, the light switch on off moment. So I'm actually looking at the HTTP server availability and I can see it sort of goes down. But a couple of things that's just kind of important. So I've actually got my marker in the middle there. So I'm actually looking at somewhere where all my points are red and I can see if I come down to the bottom view there, I can see it's actually occurring at that application. So confirming what we actually saw there. But if I actually sort of go halfway in, I can start to see a couple of things. So I can actually see that some of them are actually available. I'm actually reaching these. So I'm actually getting through there. So the number of agents impacted is, 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 uh, is less. So again, one of the things I'm thinking here, uh, Kamal, is that 
where this obviously has an impact global, which then says we're actually the application, but it's not in some sort of load balancer or, or CDN type of infrastructure. It's something more fundamental in the back end of the application because I'm not seeing it almost in a follow the sun or, or a follow the region type of uh, impact coming there. And again, then at the bottom, I'm seeing this fluctuation where I see sort of different levels of availability as I sort of come through the outage. Yeah, agreed. Uh, so the fact that it was uh, pretty global indicates that it, uh, it wasn't rolled out gradually, you know, uh, to different users in different parts of the world. Uh, rather than than that, it's actually, to your point, light switch off uh, as part of which we can see that every single agent that was testing or almost every single agent that was testing uh, this particular URL uh, observed the problem. To your point, also, what we are, what we might be looking at, is something that happened in the back end, which had like negative cascading effect on complete application. Yeah. Exactly. Now that's a great segue in. If I then switch to look at the page load, so I've come up from, uh, from there. Now we saw availability sort of dropping down in some cases to zero. If I then look at the page load, which is the time it takes for that complete page load, and we we you know we may be actually calling different components within that page. Um, and another point here, actually, I should make is that this did impact all devices. So this was the, the, the desktop client, this was um, the HTTP, if you just say HTTP, the browser portal, the, the web portal. Um, this is whenever you're interacting with Slack, this was that, this was the, the, the same problem occurred, which again is indicative that it's an application as opposed to sort of a platform or, or a hardware level uh, from there. But if I'm looking at that page load time, I can see the page loads increase. Now, Obviously, that shows me I've, I've got a problem. We were talking in a, in a previous podcast, we're talking about the fact when page load time decreases because I'm, uh, I'm not loading as many objects onto that page, so it gives the impression of performance. In this situation, we saw it increase, right? So, so we're actually then um, uh, sort of seeing wait times increase as we go from there. But if I actually then look specifically at um, the number of objects we're actually loading, I can actually go into there and I can see if I'm looking before the incident occurred, I'm actually sort of seeing the uh, 27, 28 types of objects. But then at the height, that sort of flips down to I'm actually seeing 15, 14 for some of those. So I'm not loading as many coming from there, but my page load is take, taking um, uh, more time. So what is that kind of indicating or telling us there? What can, what, what can we deduce from that? So I actually think that, you know, out of two situations that you just described, we are, oh, the one is like, you know, where the latency or page load times dip. This one is better because I would say that this indicates that the application is actually trying to recover. Like this is what that's telling me, right? The timeouts are bigger, you know, uh, application try, uh, applications trying to retry um, to load multiple different objects, ultimately resulting in, you know, increased um, and increased page load times or, you know, latency. So, so like to your point, you know, we went from a couple of hundred of milliseconds to seconds, you know, and obviously in today's world, that's going to reflect, you know, as pretty terrible user experience. But I would say that, you know, uh, loading anything is better than not loading anything. So, um, in, the, in that particular case, I would say that this, uh, this particular application-related outage is, uh, you know, better from that from the user perspective. I would say that's true to a degree. Except what we were failing to load, and uh, for, from there is we're actually sort of failing to load. Or we'll, we weren't failing to load them. We we're failing to specific, specifically call them and actually get them loaded in. Um, was mm -hmm, mm -hmm. things like if I was posting an image or I was actually trying to do it, so I could get. So what you're looking for is that base page. I get everything come through from there. But what was then failing to load was that 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 image, so I couldn't attach a um, an image to Slack or a screenshot from there. So so that was it. So yeah, you're absolutely right. And it's actually a good point you pull out from there. So yeah, absolutely right. It's actually good. It's up. It's available. It would actually show it's working. But what then happens or manifests itself is that I think it's working. I can actually get to to, to the system, but it's not functioning exactly as I actually need it to do. To us. What that, that indicated then was we're failing to pull something from that, that back end there. As I said, you know, we actually know what occurred here, and I'll, I'll get into that in a minute. But just before I do, just one thing I actually want to sort of just just, just show um, what there was just, you know, we've gone through, we've, we've said it's an application issue, we can see there's a problem on the application. But let's just take a look specifically, I want to see all these things in context together. So let me just have a look at the sort of the, the, the network itself. 
Um, and then I actually want to put down, you know, my leading indicator for everything is going to be loss. And let me just have a look at latency. So now what I've actually done, I've stacked them together. And if I could draw a line straight through, I can see my latency is consistent across the time. So I'm actually reaching these sites for my agents. Uh, but it's actually when I then sort of go in, you know, we've got the availability from the HTTP level, see my page load times increasing, but then I've got zero loss on there. So again, we can actually deduce this. It's essentially not such a network issue there, or we don't believe there's anything significant happening on the network at that time. So what I'm trying to say here is, is this bringing everything into context where we actually want to put everything together in once to give us that um, that single holistic view of that service delivery. And, and over, overlaying different metrics is, metrics is pretty helpful um, and pretty awesome in this particular case. You can quite obviously see that HTTP server availability dipped. You can see that page load time increased. Like so, you can and you know more, more, most importantly, we can see that the timeline matches when this happened. Like yeah. you know when the lights went off for the HTTP server availability, we can see that um, page load time went up. However, at the same time, we can see that latency and loss were consistent which indicate that this was clearly application-related outage rather than uh, something that happened on the network. And to have this kind of visibility within the minutes, uh, you know, from the event happening is uh, pretty powerful. Yeah, absolutely. And that correlation is really important, right? And it's true. You need to correlate that straight down through there. It, you know, it's easy to have information on a, on a single screen or I could just look. And this comes back to what we're talking out at the top where we're talking about the different groups. So if I'm actually doing... Um, uh, one particular task over here, I've got a whole bunch of metrics and silo uh, 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 measurements that are specific to where I'm working on. And this is what I'm looking at, all the lights are green. I come over here and uh, you know, I'm starting to see errors, but what's the cause of that? So if I can correlate those through together, I can come straight through, I can see where that difference is. And this is what we're talking about in, in terms of giving other areas or other departments sort of, um, or other parts of an organization, people with different domain responsibilities, um, visibility in a context they understand. So if I'm actually doing here, and let, let's, let's see what happened here. So what, what occurred here and why we got that uh, happening at the top of the hour, the, the, where, where we're seeing there, is that there's a scheduled job that runs typically on the top of the hour, which actually goes and checks the custom uh, status in, uh, information for the Slack. So, you know, uh, information that, that might be set up. So it, uh, have we turned off the, um, uh, you know, the little the, the little PTO time that was on all month for some people? So we have those, you know, was, was, that, was that disappeared um, from there? And it goes through and checks this on the hour. Now that does a sort of a, a certain amount of uh, database calls. At the same time, what was occurring was there was a, a database cluster migration um, uh, occurring at the back end. So this was scheduled that she went through from there. But what happened was they reduced capacity in a database. So by do, because they had to do it, and this was their job they were doing. So this again, to that point you were making earlier, where we're saying about um, uh, you know sometimes it's we, we we sort of just have to you know we know it's going to cause problems. We're going to do there, which is then why you schedule it out of hours essentially. And if you've got global users, it might be more difficult. But but what happened? that this, this case was the amount of calls we were starting to make in, we're hitting this database on a, on a um, uh, this, the, the cluster on a reduced capacity. And then we were failing to reach objects because they weren't available. And this is then where we started to get that sort of jump up and down where sometimes we got through, sometimes we didn't get through. Um, so it was this combination. So there was two events, which in isolation, perfectly happy. This job runs typically every hour, it's fine, it works, but put the two together and we start to get this system, uh, sorry, the, 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 this issue, the perfect storm as it was coming together. And also what that wanted just to sort of show again, so you, you talked really nicely there about this having information in context, it's being able to see things across from there. Um, and it's about giving the information that people seem to need to understand. Because one of the other things that occurred, as this went on, we obviously increased the queue depth. So we were starting or, or overloaded the queues were coming in, there was more queries coming in. So uh, Slack basically had to stop the job running so they could actually sort of see what was going on, so they could sort of back things out and, and do it that way. But one of the things that sort of manifested itself as it went through was then we talked about this, is this, this people starting to um, have issues logging on. Now, I just want to just show you what that actually looked like, because this is this information they understand. As much as, you know, I could give you a hex dump and you'd be more than happy to wade through that. Um, if I'm actually want to give that to, to somebody else, they're going to go, yep, that's fine. Uh, you, you can say, oh, it's in 
it's in offset 37 on page 67 of this doc, knock yourself out. But if I can show them a picture of what's happening, then they, they're, they're able to say, yep, okay, all right. And then we trace back to this correlated view. So it's a good point, Kamal, what you talked about in terms of having that, that information, that context together. So here, what I'm actually looking at is a transaction. And when I talk about a transaction, it's that's the interaction where I can actually see, so I actually might log on. And the point I'm showing you this, or we're going through this, is because I want to see a pictorial. So this is looking at a login page. So this is before the incident, the was occurring and I started to see um, a normal login page. So this is what I expect to see, this is what's going on, this is my transaction happening there. Then when I actually sort of get into the uh, issue itself, although we're still having the issue here because I'm looking at a transaction, I'm actually looking at the login page, it's still occurring, but we can see the transaction time's gone up and I'm still actually getting to that login page. However, what happens as the issue starts to, to build, um, and the, the, you know, we start to get an overload, then I start to get this refusal. And this is what the users actually started to experience. As they were going into it, they started all of a sudden to say, I'm sorry, something went wrong, we can't actually connect. A couple of things on that is I'm actually getting to the system. So remember, when we saw that network path was all good, the latency was low, we could actually get there. But now we're actually getting a response to the server because I'm seeing a server error, but I'm getting this something went wrong sort of, sort of screen. So I guess here, um, and what I'm enjoy, interested in your thoughts on Kamal is this, this pictorial representation of what's going on, this I believe is actually useful to these other groups. And this is what we talk about when we talk about common operating language, is giving people information in a context that they're going to be able to understand so they can actually apply it. Agreed, it's, it's so helpful. Uh, so I was just looking at this. Uh, this tied to the timeline view that you have is actually a quite uh, awesome combination. So in this particular case, what you were showing out and I was thinking about is the fact that you have like complete end-to-end -end view before the issue started, during the issue and after the issue. So here in this particular case, we can see that a login page was working fine. You know, we see like, uh, you know, fields where you can provide username, password and other authentication methods however during uh, you know a specific time when the queue loaded up as you as you pointed out we can see that there is an error clearly indicated what what went wrong you know and then you can use it as a uh, additional you know point within your to break down these silos to your point you know as part of which you can say like you know to the relevant team you know this is what we are observing and you know there's the saying that you know picture is worth a thousand words and you know there's no beating around that right like it, it's pretty obvious by itself what's happening here so the relevant team um, can take the you know uh, uh, remediation actions from from that point on that's exactly right. Picture paints a thousand words. That's exactly my word. So thanks for that, Carl. Okay, so let's actually move on to the next outage. What's interesting about these outages is that they appear operational, but when issues impact key functionality, it can affect usability. And this was the case with our next outage at Spotify. So on August the 5th, Spotify experienced a functional failure where searches yielded no results and non-downloaded place information failed to render. And when we talk about um, non-downloaded place information, what we mean is, is under Spotify, you have the option to actually download information, sorry, download uh, data and actually have it residing on your on device. So this basically meant we couldn't actually pull information from the back. So while the application itself appeared uh, functioning and uh, the existing download playlist worked as normal, you could listen to it, I was experiencing this myself, the backend search API or the API that instigated the search was appearing to fail. So the way the outage manifests itself I meant that users actually felt that there was actually an issue on, on, on with the client themselves. So I personally experienced this, um, and when the search came back with no results, my first thing to do was actually just to close the app around from there. So, so Kamal, with this, and I think this sort of goes a little bit to what you were just talking about in the previous outage when we are talking about Slack there, is this having this information to understand what was going on. You know, in the, all intents and purposes, I'd actually look at, um, at Spotify, I'd see it was up, I'd look at my desktop, I could actually play the, 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 the music or the podcast from there, but it was just something that the search, and it would actually return information. It would return not um, uh, no records found. So I'm thinking I'm getting a response back from there. It must be something my typing or, or the client. So how would the contextual information sort of help in this case? 
Yeah, b b before I even start speaking about that, it's actually quite interesting to see how, you know, people perceive this outage, you know, uh, music and podcasts and all, all, all the things that Spotify provides in such a, a nice and, and, and uh, you know, uh, smooth way uh, became so much yes. crit uh, uh, mission critical, so to say, to certain people <laughs> that, to your point, people stopped applications. Some people went ahead and actually re reinstalled the applications thinking that, you know, it's the version of the application that they are having is having some certain problems, uh, which is all to say that, you know, people do fundamentally care about the service itself. Uh, but mm -hmm. when it comes to visibility, you know, um, you know, uh, it would be very helpful to find out that something, a certain component of the product is not working the way it's supposed to. Uh, in this particular case, I would say that, you know, number of queries that are resulting, no results find would be the, one of the very good metrics to look at in this particular case. But also knowing that, you know, uh, information such as like, whether this is caused by something on the infrastructure side or this is purely application related would be uh, would be huge time saver for everyone involved. And then you would not see like, you know, outages that are uh, spending multiple hours, you would see uh, outages or application related issues that are lasting minutes rather than hours. Yeah, I think that's, that's an interesting point as well, because it's that, that let's identify the domain of responsibility. So where is this, this fault lie? Where does it go from there? So not necessarily just about proving innocence, but where can I actually do to sort of um, resolve this to get me back on? As you said, Spotify is a mission critical to me. I put yeah. the headphones on <laughs> and I can actually sort of start work reviewing the dogs exactly. going from there. The way I actually looked, uh, and this goes a little bit back into looking at, um, you know, we talked about distributed applications, we talk about the fact then we have these dependencies, a big part of that is APIs. So what, what's happening when I'm making a database query, which is what this is doing essentially, is I'm actually making a query to search the database to find me the songs, to find me the podcast, to find the Pulse Update podcast, to actually be able to sort of download that um, uh, to, to my system or, or to stream it is more, more accurately to come, to come there. That, that call that API is actually not making. So the problem itself sort of manifests itself that it was actually changed to that search API. And the reason I say that is because it was returning information. So return, return, returning me information, we weren't seeing 500 errors where I couldn't make a connection to that back-end service or unavailable or, 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 or what was from there. But what I was actually seeing coming back was a information said no um, no data was actually found. So it suggested essentially that there was um, a change to that search API, and then it sort of sort of rolled back basically uh, from there. That that's what it appeared to be. Yeah, that sounds about it. Uh, and you know, uh, to your point, like some issues are usually harder to discover compared to the other ones. Like it would be relatively easy for teams to figure out. Yes, this is five hundred. So it's quite obvious on what's happening but like you know given the fact that we are getting messages uh, saying you know no results found indicates that something is working fine right to a certain degree but not fully uh, which in this particular case is you know uh, indicative of issue that's harder to find so when, when we started speaking I said like you know number of queries that are returning no results found would be something that I would be uh, closely monitoring this particular case to see whether there's a spike in these metrics. Perfect. That's exactly right. Because when we talk about API monitoring, you know, typically we're talking about reachability and availability, which is important, right? That's obviously important. Can I get to it in the first place? That's the fundamental. Come back to our foundational building blocks. I need to resolve a name with DNS. So I actually need to be able to connect to get from there. But also, to your point there, I need to be able to execute something on there so that I understand what it is. So if I get a spike of no returns or nulls or whatever it can be from there, Exactly right, I can react in a timely manner. Um, so really what we're talking about here is that complete service delivery chain. So again, back to the top of the program, when we're talking about this ability to bring everything together in a holistic perspective because you know every little cog matters in, in ensuring that digital experience for the user. As always, it's been an absolute pleasure, Kamal, and I really hope to have you back on again soon. Well, likewise, my friend, uh, looking forward to doing this uh, again very soon, hopefully. Excellent, thanks, mate. So that's our show. Please like and subscribe, we really appreciate it, and it's valuable to us. As I mentioned at the top, only, not only does this ensure that you're notified as soon as a new episode is available, but it really does help us in shaping the show for you. So follow us on X, formerly known as Twitter, at Thousand Eyes, and any questions, feedback, or guests you'd actually like to see on, uh, please send us a note at internetreport at thousandeyes.com. So until next time, goodbye.